Kansi. I bring <laughs> greetings on behalf of the Métis Nation. Uh, today is World AIDS Day, and of course, it's the launch of Aboriginal AIDS Awareness Week here in Canada. In previous years, I've had the privilege of being there in person, as well as, of course, many of us. Uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID pandemic, uh, this is not possible. However, we must nevertheless continue doing the work necessary to combat uh, you know, AIDS, uh, afflictions, other health problems that we have as, as a people. And, and particularly at this time, you know, we talk about Yamatsu, we talk about health, we talk about being grounded in our culture and our land. And of course, uh, it's getting harder to actually connect with the land because many of us uh, need to, to stick to home. We cannot travel. Uh, we need to find ways to, within ourselves, uh, find any strength to continue moving forward. One of the things that I've always found when I've attended your sessions is uh, the dedication of so many of the people that are working in support of you and also of the participants themselves. You know, it gives me as one of the leaders in the Indigenous community, you know, hope and aspiration that you know, with this kind of collective effort, with this kind of dedication, that you know, we can overcome you know, the afflictions that, that face us. You know, you know, it is tough. And uh, currently, these conditions are exacerbated, of course, by the pandemic, but that makes us even stronger and more dedicated in terms of addressing these issues. So once again, you know, I'm happy to have had this opportunity to share a few words with you. I look forward to the next opportunity where we can meet in person and discuss some of the challenges that we faced and that we overcame. And in your community, you are overcoming great adversity. And I just encourage you to continue the positive work that has guided you over these many years. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to uh, talk uh, during Aboriginal AIDS Awareness Week about my experience over the last 40 years of addressing HIV AIDS in our country. Uh, 40 years is a long time. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is that as Indigenous people, we have been part of the Canadian response to HIV and AIDS from the very beginning. And we continue to do so. Uh, in the 21st century. And our cultural identity uh, has been a very important part of this journey. And uh, I also want to recognize that we've been doing this work from coast to coast to coast, uh, bringing together people from many nations, the First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, as well as people living with HIV and AIDS, uh, who have also uh, contributed to the work in terms of stepping up, uh, you know, attending conferences, being on committees, participating in the education, creating educational resources, and then sharing them uh, right across Canada uh, with Indigenous people, as well as non-Indigenous people. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Jack Chong Mei. I'm an infectious disease physician in uh, Calgary, where I also work at the Southern Alberta Clinic uh, looking after patients with HIV. I just wanted to send a message uh, to you uh, this year for the upcoming World AIDS Day in December on behalf of the uh, Canadian Aboriginal AIDS uh, Network. Um, since HIV was first identified uh, almost 40 years ago, um, during that time, there have been many advancements in terms of how we are able to diagnose the infection and also how we are able to treat the infection. This has resulted in people being able to live longer uh, and healthier. But despite all these advancements, uh, one of the biggest issues that still prevents many people from either seeking testing to be diagnosed with HIV or to engage in care for uh, their management of their HIV is stigma. 
stigma prevents people from seeking care because of their fear of uh, being ostracized from their communities or from their friends and family. Um, so, so my message this year is that I hope that you will help support uh, those individuals who are at risk of acquiring HIV or who have been infected with HIV to help them support uh, seeking the care they require so that they can engage in health care so that they are able to live uh, longer and healthier lives and also help prevent the spread of HIV infection within our communities. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Randy Jackson. I identify as Anishinaabe from Kettle and Stony Point Forest Nation. I am also an assistant professor in the School of Social Work with the Cross Appointment of Health and Aging at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, I just came here to send greetings on, on Aboriginal AIDS Awareness Week uh, for 2020. It's been quite a year. Um, as we all know, um, and I think that this past year has really underscored the idea that we are really all in this together. So I'm sending these greetings to to all the membership at CAN, to friends at CAN, and particularly I think to the research arm of CAN, which I am most closely associated with. I believe that Indigenous knowledge, um, like we mobilize in our research programs with CAN, are actually the key to solve many of the challenges that we face with respect to um, sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections. I look forward to working with you over the next coming year. Thank you very much. Anin Tanshi, greetings. December 1st is World AIDS Day, a time for us to honor those who have lost their battle to HIV and AIDS but also for us to continue that battle in memory of our loved ones. The rate of HIV infection in Saskatchewan continues to be more than two times the national average. A continual overrepresentation of Indigenous peoples is evidenced by 79% of the new HIV cases self-declaring Indigenous ethnicity. As well, injection drug use continues to be the most significant risk factor for Indigenous peoples. We know this stems from colonization, intergenerational trauma, and systemic racism. We also know that Indigenous women and two-spirited, lesbian, bisexual, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, and or gender fluid or non-binary, 2SLGBTQQIA are the most marginalized communities. Despite this, they are resilient, strong warriors. All Nations Hope Network has several community research projects. One of those projects, Code Away or Start a Fire, seeks to restore Indigenous women's roles and responsibilities through cultural intervention practices. The purpose of the study is to develop, implement, and assess the impact of land and gender-based cultural interventions that address risk behavior and context, mental health and trauma, and foster wellness among Indigenous women with the support of All Nations Hope Network. The Willow Warriors are the research trainees and co-researchers for the Code Away Project who participate in vision retreats, ceremonies, healer and elder guidance, and highlight the importance and benefits of strengthening and building capacity of Indigenous communities. Research can be transformative when it is led by Indigenous communities. Indigenous women and 2SLGBTQQIA are strong, resilient leaders. We celebrate the lives of those who have lost the battle with HIV and AIDS and those warriors who continue to battle. Our ancestors surround us. Our elders surround us. Elders say that we are the keepers of the home fires. And in this way, we are responsible for the well-being of the nation. That is indeed what we shall do. Miigwech, merci, thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Alexandra King. I'm a member of Medicine First Nation, which is in Ontario. Uh, Spirit World News is now in the way I am. I belong to Eagle Clan by birth and have been adopted into Turtle Clan. Uh, 
I'm uh, currently uh, living and working on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis in a place uh, that is now known as Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I work at the university where I get to do uh, research as well as um, work as a clinician, uh, getting to see people as patients. Um, I think today is particularly important for us to um, celebrate our successes from uh, over the years, as well as prepare for what we're going to be doing going forward. Um, there's a lot of work still to be done, and uh, we're in this very unusual time with COVID, and I think uh, what we can learn from nature. This is a time of winter when many animals go into hibernation or are living their lives in a very different way, and I think that's where we are right now. But we know that spring is going to come and therefore it's going to be very important that we are making uh, preparations for spring and um, are ready to get out there once we are able to uh, once again. So um, I send my greetings and best wishes to everyone and um, just uh, take very good care of yourself and those that you love and uh, we will see you uh, in the spring. I don't know. This year's theme of shared responsibility is an image of open arms embracing all those engaged in a 30 year old struggle called HIV and its rep. That embrace calls on all of us to come together healthcare providers, community activists, family members, policy makers agency directors, system managers, health researchers, and political representatives. Yes, and most of all, those infected and affected by HIV. The theme of sharing is an appeal to come together in mind, heart, spirit, and purpose across cultures and diverse roles. Whether they are traditional, communal, organizational, or lifestyle, cultural, and role differences. We come together to fashion truly meaningful steps that we can harmonize so that our efforts have greatest effect. We must strive to know each other and each other's work. Sometimes we must transcend ourselves, our ego, our culture blind spots. Yes, to walk a mile in the other's moccasins, to walk together in accompaniment. Let's do what's real to bridge the gaps between us. Only together can we hope to win the struggle for the benefit of all.